Hi and welcome to Sweden to the Swedish Tank Museum. Today we're gonna dig into this one. Um, weird looking vehicle, one of its kind and um, what is it? It's an armored car from the early 1930s. But we begin in the 1920s when the Swedish army tested um, tanks from the beginning of 1921-1922. They also looked into the different um, armored cars and they ordered three armored cars from Tida Holmsbruk, a um, company that uh, made um, lorries and these armored cars, they were pretty much ordinary lorries with an armored body and during the 1920s they realized that a bit too simple for the need that they had. So uh, they wanted a more proper armored car. Uh, so they looked outside in the world what's available and they looked at Berlier and uh, Lanchester, but uh, the different uh, options that they had was not something that they really liked. So uh, they decided we need to do something in-house, develop our own armored car, and this is the result. They set up a list of demands and it should have some ability to travel off-road. Uh, not an ordinary off-road vehicle, but the previous vehicles that they have had, uh, the armored cars, they were depending on roads. So they needed to have something that at least could be able to travel off-road. It should be able to travel in both directions and they had a list of different demands. And in order to find a good solution, they looked into a vehicle that we already had in the Swedish Army. The Artillery Tractor Model 28 made by Nohab in Trollhättan. And that was based on the Italian Pavesi design, an articulated steered tractor. And that is why this vehicle also has a very strange type of steering, which um, I will show you how it works. We haven't found any drawings or manuals for this vehicle so far, so a drawing like this is the only thing we, we can put up with today. They looked at the Italian Pavesi design and came up with this with a front axle, a rear axle and the engine is at the rear. They have two drivers, one in each direction. And when this vehicle is steering, it's turning here, so the whole axle is turning, which is a bit different from many other vehicles. So it has a very uh, good steering performance, but one of the drawbacks they came up with when having this steering in speeds up to 55, 60 kilometers an hour, it all of a sudden started to twist. So it uh, was very unstable on the on the road, so they had to find solutions to uh, to keep the steering a, a bit more stable. So this is why it looks very strange compared to many other vehicles. The car has four wheels, four wheel drive, and four wheel steering, and under this this plate there is an additional wheel, which is a spare wheel one spare wheel on each side and they are also used when you're driving cross country. They will help if you go into ditches, etc. so you won't stuck on, on the belly. Uh, so both spare wheels and helping in cross country performance. And these plates can also be opened up so you can access to the wheels if doing service or just to need to replace it. So the armor protected wheels. The armor plates in total are four and six millimeters around the whole vehicle. 
with a crew of four to five people, the engine at the rear and a 37 millimeter gun at the front. They also had two machine guns, one in the turret on top and one at the rear. You could also change the position of uh, the machine guns so they could be used either side in the doors or on top of the turret for anti-aircraft uh, defense. So they made a few different uh, modifications during the years when they were testing the, ve the vehicle. At the front there is some kind of a bar. Um, we have not found so far anything that says what it actually is. Uh, it was not there from the beginning, so after two or three years suddenly it turns up on pictures. So we still have to find out what it is. You can also close the protection for the headlights, both front and rear. So when you are going into the battle zone, you have to prepare for protecting the headlights so they won't be blown up. Inside this vehicle, you are supposed to be four to five people in this pretty cramped space with the gunner to the left for the 37 millimeter gun, the driver, which is the main driver for driving forward to the right. And this gun, we are not 100% sure that it's actually, it is the correct gun for this vehicle, but it's a similar gun that was used. And we are still looking for evidence which gun it should be. And up in the turret, you could have one water-cooled machine gun in that hole and the gunner for the machine gun was standing on the floor. The rear position with the driver on the right side of the vehicle and the machine gun on the other side. So the engine is in this part of the vehicle facing towards the rear. Gearbox in the middle and the controls, they are combined for the both drivers. You can use them for the main drive driver for the forward control or for the rear driver, depending on who's in charge. And when using both steering wheels, you can help each other to do a more exact steering since sometimes it's quite heavy, but you can use both wheels to, to help each other, which is quite handy. The gunner or commander is standing up in the turret and is using his body to turn, turn the turret and the machine gun, which is facing forward, or he could turn it towards the rear. And in top, in the hatch, there is also a possibility to mount the machine gun for using against aircraft. So it's a pretty cramped position for five people to be inside this vehicle. The task to produce this vehicle was given to Landsverk in Landskrona and they got the order in May 1930 to produce this vehicle and one year later in June 1931 the chassis was ready and they had by then used a Scania Vabis six-cylinder petrol engine with 85 horsepower as the power plant and they have ordered the armor plating from Bofoss in Karlskoga and when the chassis was ready in Landskrona without the armor plating it was driven from Landskrona to Stockholm, 600 kilometers without anything on top of it. And there it was shown to the people who had ordered it and they decided to do the final assembly at Oskarshamns Varv in 1932. So in 1932, the vehicle was more or less ready. And it was supposed to start with the trials in Stockholm and it was delivered to the cavalry unit Kohet in Stockholm. 
and they were supposed to do trials from 1932 and onwards. But due to a lot of adjustments they had to make, they took it out and in, and the real trials section didn't start until 1933. And when they used these vehicles during the trials, they realized a lot of things. Uh, it was quite capable, uh, depending on what they had ordered, but the engine was not powerful enough for this heavy vehicle. Seven and a half tons of total weight, 85 horsepower was not really enough, and it was also quite heavy to steer it. So they did more adjustments, and during the maneuver they had in 1935 in the south of Sweden, they used the vehicle and they realized that this is really something that we would need and it's capable to do the task we would like to do. But by that time they had realized this vehicle is too complicated, it's too expensive, and by 1933 and 1935 they already had the more simple Panzerbil model 31. And that was a cheap solution. So decision was made, no more of these. So that was only this one made. So they carried on with a more simple model 31, which was an armored box on a lorry chassis. This vehicle was actually kept in service. And um, in 1940, it was decided to use it as a driver's training vehicle for the more modern Landsverk Model 39 and 40 Lynx, which was also with driver in both directions. So they used this vehicle as a training vehicle for the crews that are going to be drivers on the Lynx armored car. And then it stayed on in the cavalry units and it was uh, used for training purposes as a, a peacetime training vehicle during the 1940s. And uh, it wasn't until 1951 that it was decided to get rid of it and it was donated to the Army Museum. And that's why it's still here with us today. This was the story about Pansabil for Söksmodell 29, Paddan, or Toad. It was called Toad, and um, just recently we found documents where it's actually written back then in the 1930s with, it says Toad, so it's not a modern invented nickname for this weird looking vehicle. So probably they used that because of the shape of it. Uh, it's one of a kind. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Until next, next time, bye bye. Amped. Cramped, what do? 45 people in this pretty cramped. Watching and don't for so.